How you going guys and girls, welcome to the channel. So today we are going to be putting epoxy primer on this one. And I'll run you guys through the process. All right, so for this part anyway, we're gonna need these gloves to keep our hands clean and obviously none of the oil is getting mixed up onto the bare metal as we are scrubbing the metal conditioner on, which is gonna remove this surface rust. Now it won't remove any of the heavier rust that might be up in and around the back sides of a few areas. Um, I've tried to get as much as I can off with this stuff in the previous videos. Obviously this has been sitting around a long time. Um, it's had dust and crap settling on it and yet that's why it's so rusty. But if we look on the back side, because this is how it's been sitting this whole time, this is still reasonably clean. So that shouldn't take too much to clean up. So like I said, we've got our gloves. We've got metal conditioner, we've got red scotch bright so we can scrub all our metal conditioner on, get rid of the rust. This rag here will be wet with water. Um, some people like to use warm water, cold, you know, I really don't really think it makes that much of a difference. Um, so yeah, we'll just be using a really wet rag and then this rag over here will have um, nothing on it. So that'll just be dry. That'll just be wipe off, dry the metal, um, and yeah, that'll be the acid neutralized. So yeah, let's get to it. So as you can see, it works pretty well, this stuff. Just cleaned that up pretty easy. Just a scrub on method and then wipe off with a wet rag and then follow on through with a dry rag. It neutralizes up pretty well, this one. If you find any white sort of residue on the surface, you need to go again. That's the acid drying on the panel. As you can see, this one dried sort of a matte sheen. Not a whole lot of streaking or anything on it. Same again with the back side. That cleaned up pretty well as well. So we're all done with acid wash now. So now we're ready for a little bit of blasting to get rid of little bits of paint inside here. Clean up around these studs inside the door handle little pocket and in and around these areas through here. Now normally I would probably just blast this whole thing but for demonstration purposes I'm not going to be doing that. All right so this is my little setup. It's just a little blaster I got. Don't ask me what garnet's in it. Um, I can probably find out but at this current time I do not know. I'm not a blaster I just do blasting. Um, it's a little drum that I made up to catch, you know, some of the garnet. Uh, PPE, set of riggers gloves, glasses, mask and earmuffs. It's not very nice having a uh, garnet being flushed in and out of your ears. Um, obviously anything dust related, wear a mask, don't be an idiot. Um, don't blast your fingertips, so always wear a pair of gloves. Also, like I said, it's pretty important to wear gloves when you're at this stage. Um, and yeah, obviously glasses. Um, some people wear like the face shields and you know, fully sewed up in the condom suit. Um, the garnet doesn't really bother me so much, bouncing off the arms and the legs. Um, and yeah, it's not really up near my face doing this sort of stuff out in the open. So not really gonna worry about that sort of stuff. Like I said, this is just what I use. Um, you don't have to use it. Make sure you wear what you wanna wear. Um, yeah, let's get to it. So with the blasting, I'm just tickling over just some of the harder to reach areas, lifting up some of the surface rust that might have been trapped in a few areas that I might not have been able to get with the acid, cleaning up through the areas that, you know, around the studs and in the door handle pocket, those sort of stuff can be a little bit hard to prep up by hand. So yeah, I find blasting to be sort of the best method for that sort of stuff. Going around the edges and yeah, just trying to get rid of any little bits of surface rust paint and um, yeah, the acid residue that's sort of been left over from the neutralizing process. All right, so that's a little bit of blasting done on this one. Now, probably gonna think this is a little bit strange, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna mix up my epoxy which is this one right here. So the Hepotec, or Hepotec, whatever you want to call it. Now, the reason why I'm going to be doing that is, is basically um, if you can mix your epoxy primer up sort of, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour before you actually intend on spraying it, it actually dries a lot quicker because the chemical uh, reaction has already started once it's sitting there in the pot. 
you don't have to worry about epoxy going hard, you know, in a flash. It's not a drama. Um, so yeah, like I said, mix it up before you're gonna spray it, or a little bit before you're gonna spray it. So I'm gonna mix it up now. Um, and then after it's sort of, while it's sitting, I'm gonna prep up the rest of this door skin and then we'll start spraying. All right, mixing the epoxy now. So this one's a four to one ratio. I normally go 10% reducer as well with a proper epoxy reducer. Make sure your epoxy is stirred up real nice. Uh, this was a brand new tin, so it did need a pretty good stir up. All right, so the epoxy's in the gun. That's a 1.8 mil live water AZ3. That's just my primer gun, nothing too special. All right, coming back over to this one. We're back on the sand because we're going to do a little bit of sanding and stuff on it. So, just going to be using the DA, nothing spectacular there. We've got our 80 grits and we've got our 40 grits. So generally, you don't really want to go anything finer than a 80 grit. So you don't really, you sort of want to stay away from your 120s, your 180s, that sort of thing. That'll sort of be uh, a little bit too much polishing there still. But your 40 grits, however, will be a little bit too coarse. Now, what I mean by that is, is when you get into this sort of stuff, if you have, say you have four lines like this, right? So you just have four lines. If you have eight lines, there's going to be more scratch for the epoxy to bond into, you see? So, I'm not saying the 40 grit is bad. Um, you probably wouldn't want to go any, um, any coarser than a 40 grit on a DA. If you're going to use something like 40 grit on a flat disc or um, that sort of thing, um, they become much more of a heavier scratch. So, sort of like, I don't know if you can see them inside here. I got some coarser ones through there. That might be where I use the 40 grit on the DA. Um, but yeah, just for the general sort of stuff, it'll just be 80 grit on the DA. Um, and then, yeah, probably buzz over some of this coarser blasting stuff just to, you know, really make sure I sort of um, smooth off some of that stuff, get rid of that blast profile. All right, just starting off with the ODI rip, buzzing off that phosphate coating that the acid's left over. We will notice on some of the uh, the black spots down where we replaced the lower skin, I did need to go over with a fibre wheel on the drill. Same with the backside, just because there was a little bit more blasting there. I find that's a little bit easier just to sort of knock the blasting profile off before getting in with it with the sander. All right, so that's all been buzzed up. Really happy with how that's come around. Now, one thing I didn't mention before was the little uh, attachment I had on the drill, the little, um, not even sure what you call them. But um, basically I used that on a few areas, sort of um, just to knock down the blast profile. Um, now if you're unsure what blast profile is, is basically when you blast something, it sort of leaves a little bit of a um, microscopic, but it leaves a bit of a jagged sort of uh, finish on the metal. And basically when you come over and when you come and knock the top of it off, it was sort of cut back down to a sort of level playing field. Again, this is all on a microscopic level. So that's basically what I was doing because if I'd left it all jagged how it was, basically the epoxy would sort of fill in sort of halfway and it would still leave these little nubs. Um, you know, even as fine as what this is, it would still leave a little bit of something. So I like to just sort of knock the tops off everything um, and then, yeah, go over with the 80 grit where I can. So. Yeah, hopefully there'll be no issues um, if you follow this correctly with uh, adhesion um, with your epoxy primer. So yeah, it's, um, it's where it's at. Uh, another thing you might have noticed that I did was I had the air gun on it and I was just blowing over it with um, a little bit of red scotch brot, sort of just um, scuffing over the whole surface. And basically another reason why I do that is, is because again, in some of these blasted areas, there might be a little bit of trapped uh, dust or something and a little bit of a wipe over with, um, with an abrasive like that by hand and you know some air persuasion sort of just uh, yeah really knocks out that dust um, I find so yeah that's probably one of the better ways to get it clean. Um, so the prep that I'll do now is I'm not going to use any wax and grease remover because with bare metal it's not really needed or um, I probably wouldn't recommend it. 
Um, some people will probably say, oh, you know, you need to it's wax and grease, maybe you need to wax and grease from over, you know, the roof on your house. But you don't really need to with bare metal, I believe. Um, for something like this, I would probably just go over it with a nice clean cloth and some air. Um, you shouldn't have any worries with contamination at this point anyway. Um, if you have contamination on your bare metal, chances are it was probably there before you actually started any of the, uh, the metal prep process. And the acid uh, metal conditioner that I use anyway is a degreaser in itself. So yeah, real, no real worries there. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to wipe it down with a clean rag, um, a bit of air, and we'll get the epoxy on. Just going over the panel now with some air and a clean rag, blow off any dust. All right, spraying the epoxy on now. So I always like to try and cover the areas that might have um, lots of shape in them first, just in case if you spray the big flat areas and you get some overspray landing in the tighter areas, sometimes it can ball up a little bit and you sort of, you won't get as good of adhesion. So I always like to go over those areas first And then we'll go over the areas that, you know, the larger flat areas of the panel. Not going too heavy with the first coat. Um, sort of just a medium wet coat, nothing too serious. And now for the back side of the panel. So just trying to get into any of those nooks and crannies up near where the, uh, the Bailey's channel rubber sits. Make sure I get some good coverage in there. And there's first coat applied. Like I said, not too heavy. Just trying to get a good even coat over everything. Not trying to overload the material or anything like that. And then this is our second coat. So we're going a little bit heavier on this one because this is going to be our last coat. Well, I gave the first coat a good 15, 20 minutes to flash off. It was pretty cool when I started spraying this one. But yeah, now that that's done, the second coat's going on. Sort of slowing it down, making sure I get a good build on this one, because this is going to be my last coat. And same again on the back side. Really just trying to focus on those areas where they might not have had a lot of coverage from factory. Yeah, I do like to get a good amount of build inside there, just so they do have the best chances of um, me again. All right, so that's this one all wrapped up for now. We've got all the metal work all prepped up, everything sealed off, ready for body work and further refinishing, I suppose. So if you like this sort of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button, um, like the video, comment if you want to know something else. I'll try to sort of keep this little bit uh, in layman's terms, I suppose. Um, not trying to uh, confuse sort of newcomers to this sort of stuff. So yeah, with that said, hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time guys. Cheers.